So, Final Cut Pro and Motion now have a new object tracker. So you can track objects, like this little robot guy, maybe to add a title to, and you can track faces to add titles or maybe to add color correction to. But what if you could use the object tracker to stabilize a shot? In other words, if I were to move my head left and right, but I was able to keep it right in the center of the shot. Or if I were to tilt it, and it would say straight up and down. Or if I were to move forward and backwards, but it would stay the same scale. Well, today on MapBreak Studio, I'm gonna show you how you can reframe shots using the object tracker in motion. First, I wanna give credit where credit is due. In the Ripple Live that we did last week on October 21st, one of the commenters, Daniel Suzuki, mentioned how you can apply the match mood behavior to a camera, which of course makes perfect sense. So that kind of spurred me to do what we're gonna talk about today. All right, I'm gonna show you three different examples of how we can reframe shots with the object tracker in motion. Now, doing so requires extra resolution. So you'll see here, I have the project selected, and you can see that this is a 1920 by 1080 or HD project. And this clip here, if I select it, you can see it's at 50% size because it's a UHD or 4K clip scaled down to fit in HD. So we've got plenty of extra resolution to work with. If I play the clip, Notice the framing. There's a little jar at the beginning where I stepped on a coconut or something, but you can see as Madison walks towards us, she shifts off to the right and then drop, starts to drop out of the frame. So a terrible job by the gimbal operator, which was me. So it's a nice smooth shot. It doesn't really need stabilizing in that respect, but the framing is not that great. So let's see what we can do to address that. In order to reframe a shot with the object tractor, the first thing to do is add a camera. Then I'll switch to 3D. And then on that camera under behaviors, I'll choose motion tracking match move. I'll move my playhead to the beginning, not required. I'll hold down the option key, just like in Final Cut, and it recognizes her face. So I'll select that. I'm gonna turn off rotation because I don't want the whole image rotating everywhere based on her face rotation. So I'll turn that off and click analyze. And the object tracker works basically exactly the same as it does in Final Cut Pro. Now to see what's happening, I'm gonna press Command minus to zoom out a little bit. I'll select the video clip so we can see its bounding box. And if I play now, you'll notice how the whole bounding box is moving around in order to keep our face of our subject in exactly the same position. And in fact, this is kind of cool. Just to verify that, I'm gonna create a new group, Shift-Command-N, I'm gonna make it a 2D group so it's not affected by the camera. And in the library, I'm gonna add a little arrow to that group. I'll point it towards her. And let me turn her off first, just so you can see that that arrow is not moving at all. Let's extend it out to last for the whole project by pressing O. So that arrow is not moving at all. When we turn her back on and play, you can see how that arrow just sticks to her face because the object tracker has now kept her in exactly the same location in the overall frame. So it's framed everything around her face. She's not moving at all, which is awesome. But obviously we now need to deal with these black edges based on the bouncing around of the framing. I will turn off that arrow group. Now to scale up the video clip, we have a couple of options. If I select the camera and go to the inspector to properties, we could choose to adjust the position in Z. If I drag on that, you'll see it changes effectively the scale of the clip. I'll undo that. Another option is scale Z for the camera, which does the same thing, it's more sensitive. I'm gonna undo that. The problem with adjusting the camera either in position Z or scale Z is we can't really tell how much we're increasing the scale of the clip. And we know we don't want to more than double the current size of the clip. So instead, I'm gonna select the video clip itself and I'll navigate to a point where it's the most off. And actually I'll purposely go somewhere else. So it's really off there, it's moved a lot. But let's say I think that's where, right about there. And I wanna increase the scale and now I know I can't go beyond 100% without losing quality. So I'll scale it up 
and right about there it still fits in the frame we're about 70 percent okay so now i still can reframe the shot if i select the camera i can use the x and y parameters notice the little gear icon indicates that these are being driven by the match move behavior but i can still override them and reposition the shot the tricky thing is I can't see the bounding box of the video clip anymore. I have to select the video clip, but then I can't see the controls for the camera. But what you can do is this. I'll select the camera and I'll use this little pin at the top to pin these parameters. Now when I select the video clip, we still see the parameters for the camera. So now I can see the full bounding box of the video clip, which helps me when I'm reframing the shot to know how far to go. Of course, I could just see where it turns black, but this is a nicer way to go, I think, lets you really see what's happening. And then I can scrub through and say, let's say over here, oh, this is no good, so I need to reposition it in an X to about there. And then up there, it jumps up too high, so I need it to come down in Y. And if I can't get it to work, I might need to scale it up a little bit more. But now when I scrub through, we look good. It's a little bit over too far there. So I'll move it over an X. And then it comes over a little too far there. So I am going to need to scale it up a little bit more. Now, I don't have the parameters for the video clip in the inspector anymore. This is for the camera. But in the heads up display, I can adjust the video clip scale. So I'm going to scale it up a little bit more so that the bounding box moves just outside right there. And then as I scrub through, we look like we're good. So great. So now what I'll do is I'll click to deselect that clip so we don't see the bounding box. Shift Z to fill the frame and play it back. And now she's fixed in one part of the frame. She's not moving at all relative to everything else, which is cool. But at the same time, it's a little too much for me. I can see we still get a little bit. I didn't quite scale it up enough. We got up a little bit there. So I'll just move the camera down and Y a little bit and we should be good there. Yeah, so now she fills the frame the entire time and stays in one point. But the result naturally is that the background bounces around a lot in order to keep her steady in the frame. So it's great that she's not moving around in the frame anymore. She's not dropping low out of the shot towards the end, but it's a little too much. So here's a great way that you can back off on this impact of this tracking. So with the camera selected, I'm going to press Command-8 to bring up the keyframe editor. And you can see here what the match move is doing to both X and Y. So the green is position in X and the purple is position in Y. And you can see how the match move is moving around the frame, especially right here in X where she dips down low in the frame. So X is moving up to adjust that. Now, it's a little too much. So what I'm going to do is for the position of the camera, I'm going to click the downward facing arrow and choose add parameter behavior, average, and look at the lines in the keyframe editor. Once I select this, they immediately smooth out. The amount of smoothing is determined by this window size. And if I increase it, you can see it smooths out more and I decrease it, it smooths out less. So you can choose an amount that works for you. So maybe I'll do something like that. Play that back. Notice I'm not getting full frame rate playback. If I close the keyframe editor, it will improve playback. Usually. Not now, probably because I'm running my screen recording software. But now I still have her much better framing, but not quite as extreme as before. I've smoothed that out nicely. Because I've smoothed it out, I'll press command minus, I can probably scale her down a little bit because we're not adjusting everything as dramatically. We have some extra room now. So I can scale that shot back down a little bit and still be all within the frame without ever showing any black edges. So there what we've done is to match move a camera to her face to keep her in one place. And then we've blown up the clip enough to be able to fill the frame and framed her where we wanted and then backed off on the effect with the average behavior. One more thing I did is I added a few keyframes for rotation Z to fix that stumble where I kind of slipped going backwards right here in order to straighten out the shot at the very beginning. And here's how they look side by side.
In this shot, we have a kayaker working their way down the river and notice how they move up in the shot. The framing is staying pretty steady for the overall scene, but the kayaker's moving in the shot. But let's say we wanna keep the kayaker in the same place in the frame. Once again, I'll add a camera, switch to 3D, add the motion tracking match move behavior to the camera. I'll put it over the kayaker and as opposed to Final Cut, you can't drag a corner of this bounding box to scale it all at the same time. You have to do these separately. I'm gonna make it very small. And I don't care about rotation here. I'm just gonna analyze for position. By the way, it analyzes for position, scale, and rotation. Those just aren't turned on right now. You can always turn them on after the fact. And the other thing I wanna mention is this is a very smooth shot. If it were jerky, you could always stabilize a shot before using the object tracker. Under behaviors, under motion tracking, you could use the stabilize behavior, which works the same as it does in Final Cut Pro. Now that that's analyzed, I'll hit Command minus to zoom out a little bit and select the clip so we can see the bounding box. And once again, we can see the motion of the clip as the match move keeps the kayaker at the same place in the frame. I'll leave my mouse here without moving the mouse and you can see how it's tracking that kayaker perfectly because we're keeping him in the bottom of the frame, him or her. So now what I wanna do obviously is scale this up so that it will fit in the full frame. This particular clip is not a UHD clip, so this is more just for demonstration purposes. So I'll increase the scale of the clip and I'll reposition the camera. Once again, I'll pin the controls of the camera and select the clip so we can get a better idea of how much extra room we have to work with. And I'll move this up in the shot and we'll see if that's too much. We go to the beginning and it's definitely too much. So I'll move it down. And this is a case where we will need to scale it up quite a bit to get it to where we want it to be. I'll keep scaling it up and adjusting it in Y at the beginning of the shot and then seeing where we need to go by the end. It needs a little bit more. And we can go a little bit higher And really to get to the end of the shot, we need to scale it up even a little bit more. Go to the beginning, pull it up as far as we can. And now it stays completely in the shot the whole time. I'll deselect everything, Shift Z to fit the full frame and we'll play it back. And kind of similar to the other one, it's a little too much. There's a little bit of jerkiness going on here. So let's select the camera, Command 8 so we can see the basically the path of these corrections for both position X and Y. And for the camera's position, I'll once again add the average parameter behavior. I think the default value of 10 often does a really good job. And now with that on, I'll play it back and it plays quite a bit more smoothly while still keeping the kayaker at the bottom of the shot. And let's look at how these look side by side. If you're enjoying this content, click the subscribe button below. In this third and final example, I'm gonna show you how to work with scale with the object tracker. And I'm gonna debunk the uh, very popular myth that focal length has an impact on the distortion of objects. So I'm using myself so I don't distort somebody else's face. So I have the simple shot of me walking towards the camera. Obviously the camera is at a fixed focal length. I believe it's 24 millimeters here. So I'm walking towards the camera, and what I wanna do is have my face keep the same scale the whole time. So as usual, what I'll do is add a camera, this time I use the keyboard shortcut, Option Command C, Return, to switch to 3D, then I'll choose Behaviors, Motion Tracking, Match Move, drag it over my face, hold the Option key down so it recognizes my face, and I'll click Analyze. And now I'll command minus to zoom out a little bit, select the video clip so we can see the frame and you can see what's happening. And now my face is locked down in the center of the frame as I get closer, but scale's not being affected. And you might think, oh, well, I just got to turn it on. I'll select match move and turn on scale. Uh, but you'll notice nothing happens. I'm also going to turn off rotation. It will just make the scaling we eventually do a little bit easier. So here's the problem. It is tracking scale, but it doesn't know how to apply that scale 
to the camera. So if I select the camera and we go to the properties inspector, you can see that position Z is now being modified by that parameter behavior by the gear icon and scale is being affected for X and Y, but not Z. And in a camera, the only thing that makes sense is scale of Z. So if I weren't match moving a camera, if I were match moving an object, like a, a shape or something else, it would scale. But the camera can't because it needs to be Z. So what we can do is link the scale of Z to X or Y. Notice that X and Y are different values. So the object tracker is tracking the scale of my face non-proportionally. It's not a proportional. X and Y are different. So we need to choose one. So what we're gonna do, I'll select the camera, and then for scale Z, I'll choose add parameter behavior, link. I'm gonna link the scale Z to the camera. I'm gonna link it to properties, transform, scale, and I could choose X or Y. I'm just gonna choose Y here. I often find Y works a little bit better. Now that I've done that and I play back, notice that my face stays the same size and the whole image shrinks down to accommodate it because it's keeping my face the exact same size the whole time, which is kind of super cool. Now, obviously, to scale this up is gonna require much more resolution than just doubling. And again, have a UHD clip and an HD timeline but I'm gonna to have to zoom this up quite a bit, but this is just to demonstrate a point here. So you can see how you can link the scale to make that work. And now I'm gonna increase the scale of this clip to fill the frame. And I'll go down a little bit more because I notice I can move it over. So I'll select the camera. Once again, I'll pin the camera controls and select the frame just so I can see what I'm doing. And I can move over in X like that and I can also move over in Y, but I'm not gonna move over in Y, and I'll show you why. If I go to the beginning, now I can move over in Y. I'll move up a little bit to reframe me, myself at the beginning, uh, and maybe over this way a little bit. And then towards the end, I'm still a little bit low in the shot. And the reason for that is the scaling of the camera is around the camera's anchor point, which is in the center, and this my anchor point of my mug here was in the center of my face, so they're not the same. And the way that we can deal with that is by simply adding a move behavior to adjust for that. So what I'll do is choose, uh, select the camera, behaviors, basic motion, move. And then at the very end of this, you can already see I'm now framed up nicely. It just did it automatically. It sometimes just works. It shouldn't, but it did. So that works. Now, Obviously, for this to work, I am zoomed in very close here. You can see all the noise in the shot because I'm blown up a massive amount here uh, to get this shot. So it's a little bit, you know, it, it's obviously not a useful shot, but it does demonstrate how you can use scale. You usually wouldn't use it on something extreme. But let me show you. Notice how my face looks kind of flat there, and when it gets closer to the camera, it looks very distorted. So guess what? Like. If you go and search in the internet for focal length on face, uh, focal length effect on face, you'll see that it'll tell you that the focal length will affect a face. And in fact, sometimes you might see this GIF of different focal lengths seeming to have an impact on the face. But the focal length has nothing to do with it at all. It's all based on how far you are from the camera. So this is a fixed focal length where I'm far from the camera, so my face looks flatter here, and here I'm closer to the camera, so it looks more, my nose really sticks out, put it that way. Uh, sorry you have to look at that. But um, that's the deal, it has nothing to do with focal length, it's all about the distance from the camera. So really what we've done is create a little dolly zoom effect in post, usually a dolly zoom effect is created while you're shooting by moving both the camera and changing the focal length at the same time to keep the object in the frame the same size. If you think of the Jaws shot or in Vertigo. Uh, here we've done it in post by using the object tracker to reframe the shot using scale. And here's those two shots side by side. So we'd love to hear your comments below. Please subscribe. And we'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.